Aloha and welcome to the 40th annual Hawaii International Film Festival presented by Hale Kulani. Um, and welcome to our discussion with director Mallory Ortega, the director of The Girl Who Left Home. We would, like, we would like to extend our thanks to all of our sponsors for helping make this festival possible. Um, my name is Isil and I'm coming to you all the way from my living room in Long Beach, California, um, the land of the Tongva people and the Quiche people. Uh, so some quick housekeeping uh, tips or points before we get into this conversation. Uh, for any program updates regarding the festival, please keep an eye on our website at www.hif.org. Um, lots of stuff, including film events, talk story panels, and Q&As. And also, don't forget to vote. For audience voting, to participate in the audience voting, please go to our Hawaii News Now Audience Award voting site at hawaiinewsnow.com slash hiff. One more time, hawaiinewsnow.com slash hiff. That's your place where you cast your vote for your favorite narrative, your favorite documentary, and your favorite short film. Mahalo to Hawaii News Now for their support. Um, and now let's get into our conversation. Uh, so we're meeting, or we're going to be in conversation with Mallory Ortega. So let's go ahead, welcome her to the virtual stage. I just want to extend my congratulations for the film. For folks who may not realize it, uh, this is Mallory's directorial debut and what a tremendous achievement this is. And it's even more special to learn that you wrote this piece, like, you know, already to, to direct a feature, but also know that you wrote a piece and you had a hand in the lyrics and the choreography of this beautiful film. Um, but I'm most tickled by sort of seeing this Filipino in America story that I haven't quite yet seen. Um, it's, you know, Filipino in East Coast, Filipino in Maryland. So mm -hmm. let's start there, Mallory. Like, what was the sort of origin story of, of this film? Well, I am from Maryland. Um, I grew up there. Uh, I think my family moved there when I was four or five. Um, we were originally from San Diego. And so it, I, I do remember San Diego when I was younger, just being around Filipinos, you know, my whole family, our extended family, you know, that's just, this is how it was. Um, and then moving to Maryland, it was just like, where are all the Filipino people, you know? And I think my parents did a really great job, um, you know, keeping us within that circle, within the community by going to Filipino school, we would learn all these dances and, and culture classes and things like that. Um, so uh, if you watch the film in the end, there's like this big fiesta essentially and they're all dancing and like you know that's just like a homage to my to my community literally people who have grown up with me were in that scene doing the dances and and it, it just felt like a really great community thing which is really funny after you know how many years of living in LA and being apart from them but the story really originated from me wanting to see what it was like you know if I had the opportunity to be very open with my mom. You know, um, I think growing up again, it's just this struggle, cultural struggle between a Filipino in America and a Filipino American. Mm -hmm. um, and just the slight differences in the culture, you know, it's huge, you know, for, for me, I didn't really know if I could be as Filipino, you know, being like, not bullied, but, you know, made fun of at school. And so I wanted to be more American. So I fit in, but then that really created a, you know, a, a rift between myself and my parents and, you know, just the traditions that we are taught when we were younger. Um, and so when I was at film school at USC, I, you know, was like, well, let me see in my brain what might happen if I took my mom to a bar. And so I just knew that she would freak out if I put her in a Lyft or a Uber, like with a stranger, she'd be like, what are you talking about? You don't know him. He's going to kidnap us. Um, and then if I got her into that car, what would it be like if I took her down an alley to like a speakeasy where it's just like, it looks dangerous out here, but on the inside, it's amazing. Um, and just kind of like having fun with how she would react. And um, there's a karaoke scene uh, in our film where they get to, you know, relax a little bit. They get to take a break from mourning from Christine's father. And and this is kind of where in, in my own life, I, I learned so much about my parents and, and my mom just by being in their shoes and what it actually meant to be a Filipino in America. Um, and I feel like, you know, you hear it a lot in, in, um, in our Filipino stories, like the sacrifice, the sacrifice, but it's, it's such a huge part of our identity. Um, but just taking it a step further to where 
the parents can have a safe, the, the, ch- the kids and the parents have a safe space to really talk about it and, and take the time to like process that. And that's kind of where this film started. And, and once I wrote that karaoke scene, I was like, okay, well, where can we go next? And try and just trying to find a through line with all the characters of, of an understanding, not that they have to take sides or, or admit someone is right or wrong, but just have a better understanding of how we felt growing up America versus in the Philippines. So well, that's I'm, kind uh, of where it stemmed from. I love that you kind of, um, you brought up the karaoke scene because what I really love about that is um, Filipinos on film, Filipino Americans on film have come quite a long way now in my old, in my old age, right? But um, mom, Emmy, you know, when she's kind of getting wasted and sharing her story, it was no longer a sort of like, you don't understand me, mom, I'm in America type of story. Right. There's this, there's this um, understanding, there's this drunken understanding of just like <laughs> sneaking out of the house and like, but then there's a little bit of nuance of like, mom, you're still weirding me out just in the sort of physicality between, between uh, Christine and, and mom. Um, right. I, I, how did you, first of all, how did you sort of prepare them? I can't even think about getting drunk with my mom. How did you prepare like your talent to, Cause I would imagine any Panay is like, no, I'm not, I'm not drinking with my mom. Like, how did you prepare them for that? <laughs> um, well, first off, Emmy is just, she is just so great. You know, she is, she is not recognized for how great she, a, of an actor she is. I'm telling you, she just knows how to light up a room and make any, any serious situation funny. Um, and so with, with Emmy, it was, you know, it was just kind of like, well, Emmy, well, how would you, like, do I need to give you shots? Like, do you need that? She's like, no, I think I got it, you know? And, and I think she she really felt free to, like, em, you know, embody her mom. Um, she told me, you know, unfortunately, you know, months before I cast her, her father did pass away. And so she was living with her mom and, and she saw what was happening to her mom, you know? And and she really took, took that in um, and it, it was like, it was heartbreaking, but it was also just very real. And I think that, you know, that experience for her really like helped her dig into that moment of like, you know what, so this is who my mom is and what would my mom be if she got drunk? And like, so I think that that's kind of, I don't want to speak for her, but I feel like that's how she really Mm -hmm. um, embodied that moment. Um, And I think it also has to do with, we just were such a close family a film family um we all got very comfortable really quickly and you know it 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 was truly special I don't I don't even know what happened um but the the crew was living in my house we went all indie the crew was living in my house you know my parents are empty nesters there was maybe like 15 people we had like extra bedrooms because my parents just made every empty bedroom every room a bedroom you know and um, and so that was one thing. So we all like went to work together. We all went home together and the actors went to their hotels, things like that. And so we were really a family. And I think that that environment really helped all three of them, Emmy, Haven and um, Laura, just feel comfortable and feel like they had a past relationship to be that open. Um, so I, I, I mean, that's all I could, I can really say. Uh, I, I was, I offered, I was like, do you want a shot? You do you want it? They're like, no, we're fine. I'm like, okay. acting. I'm just, you know, method acting. Do you need that? I don't know. I'll put it on the table. But um, no, they, they, I think they were all just very comfortable with the material, with, um, with each other. And I think that it, you know, it just really shows on, on camera. Um, I want to get into a little bit more of the sort of the vibe of, you know, you know, film, filming together as a film family, but um, let's go back or let's continue on the, the, the note of material. Um, you freaking wrote a musical for your directorial debut. I um, know. What was I thinking? <laughs> um, but you, uh, to sort of reference, like you have sort of experience in that world, um, but yeah. like, yeah, talk about like, you know, the assembly of this film and, and, and just the process of writing this. Yeah. Um, well, so Mango Sticky Rice was my short film. It's a musical, yes. Uh, and um, that was my thesis film at USC. And once I did that one, 
um, I didn't write the music or anything. I just directed it or, and I didn't write the script. Um, and it, it was just so fun. Um, and that seems so simple to say, but there was like, you know, there's an underlying meaning, underlying message to, to the film, which is, you know, if you open your heart, then you will, you will find not, you will find someone, you know, whether it's that person or, you know, you'll just be open to who is available to like, you know, fill your needs as a friend or whoever. Um, and so after I did that one, I was like, I have to do another musical. It's just too fun. And I, I really like diving into characters' uh, minds with the music. I just think it's more, um, it's just, it, it really gets you into an emotional state faster with melody, with like poetry, right? And, um, mm. and so then I wrote, uh, I wrote the feature film, you know, with in mind of like, oh, maybe it could be a, a movie with musical elements, you know? Um, but then I just felt like, Filipinos sing all the time like I come from a singing family Haven comes from a singing family and if you don't see if you can't find a Filipino who can't sing you know they can dance and if they can't sing or dance you know they'll do it anyway you know so it just felt like this was such a natural thing to add into the story um and you know you don't there isn't a Filipino American musical like there's no Broadway right. musical that's contemporary you know it's it's it just doesn't exist and for me, I'm like, my one of my dreams was to be on the stage and like, be, um, you know, in Sound of Music, being Maria Von Trapp, like that was such a dream for me. And I don't get to have that because I'm not white, you know, so it just felt like a great opportunity, not only to serve the story and like just my family, personally, how we just bust out singing, and we'll just start harmonizing and stuff. But, you know, for anyone else who is a music lover, and, and, um, it, it just kind of just worked. And so um, I met a composer at USC and I was like, hey, I have this crazy idea. Do you want to like, you know, bounce off ideas and see if we could collaborate? And Alex Winkler, our composer, um, you know, he was just happy to do it. And we worked really well together. And Steve was a good friend of mine as well. He actually worked on Mango Sticky Rice, my co-lyricist. And we just like, it just felt like all the cogs were working and we worked really well together and it was just very exciting like every every step of the way just felt so exciting like oh my god like yes I know exactly what you're talking about you know we would finish each other's sentences and and it just felt like a really great collaboration and so since since that happened it was just like well there's no going back because there's such a great collaboration there's no way we can turn around and be like ah this will be a straight film it's fine um and that's just kind of how it it built from there I, I'm curious um and just in terms of process like you know, watching it the second time, like, you know, what what was first in the sort of creation sort of timeline? Is it the, I guess, the storyboarding of her, of your lead story? Is it the, do you have melody first that you craft around? Um, mm. If you could share with the audience a little bit like that process. Yeah, so we, um, well, we crowdfunded. So this is completely independent. You know, I started my own production mm -hmm. fee and and all this jazz and um, we crowdfunded three times and each time we did my composer and I made a new song um, first off to test um, to test a song that I wanted and to like you know get people jazzed up about it and so the first thing we did actually we made a proof of concept so we made like a short we made a short film it was 20 minutes it was the it was the the karaoke scene and the scene before it um, and we wrote two songs that were supposed to be in the film for that proof of concept. And the way Alex and I work is I would, I would send him like a reference song. I'm like, I kind of want it to be like these two songs and then here are my lyrics. And he would take those songs and the lyrics and kind of feel it out and, you know, understanding the story and the scene around it. He, he would come up with like a really rough melody and he might sing it or he'll just be like, this is kind of like how I'm feeling the music would go. And if he didn't sing the lyrics, then I would have to then figure out, okay, how does this melody go? And so from there, we would kind of go back and forth. I would, you know, Steve and I would simplify lyrics or rearrange the form. And then um, Alex is like, I'm not a great singer. So you kind of have to like take the lead on where it goes. And so Steve and I would figure that out too. Like where are the highs and lows? Um, and uh, and it, it, that's, you know, it's a lot of back and forth, but that's how we kind of got it done. That's, I mean... That's a whole lot more than than 
your typical director cinematic directorial debut. Um, yes. <laughs> and congratulations again to the Thank whole entire you. team for. I mean, you could feel the love and like. Uh, so even on the in, on the indie level, I'm like, yo, that's a lot of work. That is freaking <laughs> a lot of work. I know. Um, in addition to sort of uh, obviously the assembly of the music and the lyrical content, there is the element of dance, and it's not just the dance. I mean, yeah, when you open up with people on stage dancing, that's already a huge sort of like feat to to direct those many humans. But the cinematography mm -hmm. like really played a little bit of the help the audience move through the film with you. Um, yeah. I'm most taken sort of like how you took us into the kitchen a little bit. Like, um, I, I, I'm curious if, if that's a kitchen that's already familiar to you because it seemed to, you seem to ha have like sort of intimate, you brought us into intimate perspectives of the kitchen, like the, the, the shelfy thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shelf, um, yeah. Could, uh, talk to us a little bit about sort of like your cinematography and how you worked it in, in Maryland and your sets in, on, on that side. Sure. Yeah. Well, so that restaurant used to be my parents' restaurant, actually. So Aww. I know that restaurant very well. Um, they, you know, unfortunately, they don't have it anymore. They closed a long time ago, but, you know, it, it was time for them to move on, which was fine. Um, so I'm happy that I got to film it. So like, hey, mom and dad, I, I have history here for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I, I'm curious a little bit on the kitchen, like, because I was like, did she shut down a kitchen for this? Or no, was that I an didn't. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So my parents, um, they didn't operate. I think they didn't operate for three days of the week. Um, and then they, so then that's when we were in the kitchen. Those were our three days every week. Um, okay. Yes. However, there was one day we had to shoot on a Sunday and that's their busiest day. They have a buffet. Um, and, uh, and I don't, I can't, they were, I told my parents, I was like, okay, we're coming at this time. Is that okay if we start filing in? They're like, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And then we come in, but there's like so many people there. They're like, we're so sorry. We're busier than we usually are. So we had to wait for the thing to close. And we're like, oh my God. And that was actually the luau scene at the very end. And like, you know, there's so many people there. We're like, how are we going to do this? We don't even know. Um, yeah. So luck that was the only day we kind of had trouble with like actual customers. Um, but yeah, no, my parents were huge. I mean, they, they did not know what they signed up for. I will tell you that. But when they saw us in their kitchen and in their home, they're like, wow, this is very impressive. This is what you're doing. And this is why you don't call me. I'm like, yes, because it's a lot. <laughs> I'm not dead. I don't hate you. It's just a lot. I promise. Um, <laughs> but as far as um, the cinematography aspects go, uh, Matt Halla, he's a good friend of mine. Um, I got him from USC and he actually scouted with me before uh, filming so we had ideas of like what we wanted to do and you know we're always talking to each other um, and uh, for the kitchen specifically it's just you know it's just always been we've had that restaurant I want to say for over five years so it's always just been like oh wouldn't that be cute if there's a scene here and then we could do something over here and like and I was like I need them in the refrigerator it's gonna be amazing you know um, so I yes I did have a very intimate intimate uh relationship with that restaurant and matt was just very gung-ho on it and he too he really likes um you know he's very he has a very good eye and if he sees something interesting he's like can we just shoot it like this i'm like sure let's do it it looks great you know so there was a lot of trust within one another to make sure that the the framing looks good and and what about the the town that you shot in um it feels like a quaint town i mean i can't i can't tell where it is i just know it's in the e it's in the east there's little mm -hmm. glimpses of maryland like in in the little bits that i see in the in the background but like it was very um had I, it didn't feel like a filipino like a fish out of water thing like you could tell she was back home like mm -hmm. talk to us a little bit of like where you shot it sure so in the beginning of the film we shot in old ellicott city and that's actually very close to my college and so i know that strip very well and my sister actually lives on that strip which is really funny um so we actually used her house um that's her car you know like it's <laughs> my parents cars you know um so so old ellicott city it is historic um so that's why it feels really quaint and um and then 
the the house that uh, Christine's parents is, that's my parents' house. And that's where I grew up. And so, yeah, we're like surrounded by farmland and you see cows and like trees and, you know, that's, that's, that's my hometown. Um, And that's, that's what I grew up on. And it was actually funny because all the crew members, most of them are from LA and they're like, whoa, the trees are changing. We've never seen this before. I'm like, yeah, this is my hometown, you know? I felt very proud. You, you really brought it like in a very tender and sweet way to the screen without without sort of like making it like a postcard. Like we, I felt like I was going home with oh, with your lead. So congratulations so on that. Thank you. Um, let's talk about your lead. Let's talk. How did you find Haven? Um, she is uh, a gem on screen. And oh she, my god i know she kills it when she's freaking making the pundi cell like she mm-hmm. like she's all over she's singing live is she you know she's she's singing live yeah like she Isn't she's she has pipe. that's first of all she's making pundi cell while she's singing and she's singing live <laughs> and she's and she's angry but like <laughs> how, how did you find her like um how did she join the project yeah, so we had a we have a casting director with um, the Liz Lewis uh, casting company um, in New York. They have a branch in LA as well. But um, our casting director Angela McGee, she was so wonderful. Um, you know, we sent out a breakdown, and she she was like, hundreds of people are submitting, Mallory. Like, how do you want it? Do you want me to send you all of it? Like, usually I don't. I just send selects, and I was like, if it's hundreds, just send me selects. But even still, we had you know, I think I saw like me oh, definitely over 20 uh submissions and then i think between new york and california what what how many between new york and california i think i saw i think i think i saw maybe 22 20 as well not 22 mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but yeah i saw a lot of i saw a lot of people and um what really um you know and and when i saw her video i have to say i was like oh my god like, I think it's her. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was truly one of those moments, you know, you, you hear it all the time, but I was like, oh my God, I think it's her. This is crazy. But I didn't want to like, you know, I was like, don't jump into anything. And she was one of the first people, the first videos I saw. I was like, don't jump into anything, you know, mm-hmm. let's just figure it out. Um, but what really helped me uh, make that, that the decision on Haven was actually Emmy because we, I had actually planned on casting older for both Christine and uh, Mary and so I was looking for much older and um I just I wasn't really clicking with anyone that I saw to play Mary um because they also had to have the singing chops and the acting chops and a comedic bone you know it's just very it was really it was hard to find for me um and and I looked we looked for a long time um but then a friend of mine just texted me one day it was like hey I have a friend her name is Emmy Caligato she's amazing she's so funny she's very caring I just want to put her name out there. And I was like, Emmy Caligato, what? And I, I just, you know, met, emailed Angela, my casting director. I was like, hey, did Emmy Caligato submit? And she's like, yeah, but she wasn't in the age range that we were looking for. So I didn't send her to you. I was like, oh, okay, send her. And when I saw Emmy, I was like, oh my gosh, it is her, you know? And so that really, you know, and she's younger. So everything like shifted down. I was like, okay, like it's, it's this, okay, let's see, let's meet Haven. Let's see what's up. And um, that's how those two came together. Um, it was just so wild. It was so wild. They have a really, like, they have a very like um, sweet chemistry on this on mm-hmm. screen. Like you see, I mean, you see it throughout the film. I, I'm, I'm most in love with it in the, in the karaoke scene and I shared with you like um I mean you have uh the gift of such a loving cast and filmmaking team and it and it reads on screen but also you see it in social media as a sort of like extra souvenir as an audience member and yeah. the interactions that I see between Emmy and Haven occasionally and also with like Paulo sometimes like oh, coming yes. into the mix um yeah talk a little bit um about bringing um <laughs> Prince Charming <laughs> uh, my heart is palpitating um he, i mean he's so he's so um he's so not prince charming in the yeah. film he's so tito tony stop saying that like um I how know. did how did paulo come into this mix i it's so funny i i wanted him i wanted him since i wrote pen to paper you know like but i just didn't think i could get him 
because right. it's Prince Charming. <laughs> um, but again, with the help of Angela Mickey, uh, my casting director, she yeah, she just like made it happen. She's like, oh yeah, I you know I'm talking to his agent, blah blah blah. Um, I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. What is happening? And then you know he came okay. in and. I try to be as cool as possible when he did a read with us. And like, I think I was cool, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think he, so, you know, he came on board after, um, or no, he actually came on board relatively the same time Haven and Emmy did. I just didn't, I just didn't think I could get him. Um, but he was so sweet. He just was like, um, it, it just, I don't know. I don't know what I expected because he is so nice in, Cinderella but he is also just really nice in real life um and he just really went for it you know and and um I just he just he just surprised me honestly um he really I think at first he was like um trying to figure out like the comedy he's like how do you want me to say this all along and I'm like Paolo like it's all good. Like you can figure it out. Like, you know, just, just really have fun with it. You're the cool uncle. You're, you want to be so cool. And, and like, I think like putting him in the Bruno Mars get up and, you know, I cut his hair and we styled it that way for him. And um, I think, you know, at the end of the, of the shoot, he was doing stuff that I'd even ask him to do. He was really like improving. He was adding lines. He was like, let's time to get laid. And I was like, Oh my God, that came out from Paolo's mouth. Like I did not write those words. And, and he, he claims like in some of our Q and Q and A's, he claims, he's like, no, I think Mallory wrote that. I was like, Paolo, I did not say for you to say it's time to get laid. Like that was you, that is your Tito Tony coming out, you know? And he's, he said, you know, he was so grateful for the opportunity to play something fun and silly. Um, he told me, he's like, yeah, you know, I just, I just get pigeonholed for all these serious roles. And I didn't know what I could do until I was doing it. And that made me feel really good, you know, because he is funny. He's so, he's just a big dork and no one knows it. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, and I love it. <laughs> in addition to, you know, seeing sort of like the, the recognizable like family dynamics of like Christine and her mom, something about Tito Tony's dorkiness, like really like made it like, all right, legit Filipino, like just like his <laughs> puns and the way like he interacts with her, like, it, and, mm -hmm. it, and also being like an older Filipina and be, knowing his musical, like his musical theater legacy, um, yeah. it made it so special to have him as part of the film in this role. Um, oh, absolutely. I can't, I mean, I just feel like if, if I were on your set, I would be like giggling all the time, like in his presence. Can you talk to, I mean, on that note, can you talk a little bit of what it was like to have this group? You have a, a powerhouse group of like talented Pinoys. Um, I imagine, you know, and they're all like kind of gathering in the periphery of your parents who are, you know, also bringing you all the super Filipino-ness. What was yeah. it like on set to kind of put together this film with like this, you know, Helipanoi team? It was so fun. It, it was, um, there was a moment when we were shooting the luau scene and we were just like joking around about like Filipino stuff. And we, I, you know, we were all putting on really bad accents. Um, and it like, we were cracking up so much. I was like crying. I was like, I never, like, it just never occurred to me that I could have this much fun on set. And like, I don't, I don't know how to explain that feeling. It was just like so nice to be on a set with Filipino people about a Filipino movie. And I just like, I just felt like a, you know, like I was just watching from above, like, wow, like there's something really special here. This is, it, I, yeah, it was such a special feeling. And, um, you know, like I said before, every day, I was just like going to work with your family, then coming back home with the family and then waking up the next day, having breakfast and doing it again, you know? Um, and there was a, there was a moment with um, Haven, you know, she, she's in practically every single scene. And the one scene she's not in is with um, the phone call between Mary and Tony, Paolo and Emmy, when um, Emmy oh, doesn't she, feel yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. They're on the phone. And Emmy is just like an incredible physical comedic actor. She is just so funny. She doesn't have to say anything. Just the way she moves is funny. And Haven was like standing next to me because she finally got a break and got to watch people. And we were trying so hard not to laugh 
because Emmy is doing crazy things. And then Tony or Paolo is like in the corner of the room hiding because he's on the phone with her to do the, his lines. And he's also trying not to crack up. So we're all like looking at each other, trying not to crack up. And it just, it, it, it was just a really great feeling. I don't know. That's all I could really say. It was just um, every day was like, I can't wait to go on set. You know, it's just such an interesting and a very rare thing to say, like to truly say, I can't wait to go on set. Like, this is so fun. For any audience members out there, follow the hashtag, the girl who left home, follow, follow, yes. follow the hashtag and follow their IG, but also follow all the actors because they all have the best behind the scenes, like posts on Instagram. Yes. I'm going to reference this now for posterity. Um, the mom dance that Haven yes. and Emmy do is gold. It's gold. Uh-huh. Do the ice, do the ice. <laughs> if you're not Filipino, um, if a mom does that, you have been blessed and she will offer you lumpia quickly after, I'm sure. Um, so I, I, sorry, with sidetracked. So now um, I do want to talk about what it means to sort of share this film now broadly. Uh, this is like you're on the beginning of your festival circuit. You're screening now at you're screening at the Hawaii International Film Festival. There's a large population of Filipino Americans in Hawaii. Um, what does it mean for you as a Panay to kind of birth this into the world? Uh, oh man. It, it, it feels really great. It, it feels, um, you know, I didn't know going into film school that I didn't know what my mission was to I just knew that I had a passion to get into film and I didn't know exactly why I just knew that I had to do it, you know, and, and my parents were like, you're going to do what? Like you're, you're going cross country. Like I, you know, literally like I was the girl who left home in, in, in very many ways, but um, you know, I just didn't know why, like I had this calling. I didn't know why I got into this program, you know, but I was like, I have to go and see what happens. And it was very clear my first writing class that I had to make, Filipino movies because no one in my class understood understood the characters and they're like people would never say this people would never do that la 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 and I'm like this is like literally verbatim from my life like you can't say that can't happen because this is literally from my life you know and um and my professor was really really great he was like Mallory doesn't matter what people think is right or wrong the fact that you wrote this and you wrote person, age, Filipino American is so important. You need to keep doing that. And I was like, oh, this is why I'm here. I'm supposed to continue to make films for me and for our culture. This is, this is why I'm here. Um, so for this to be birthed and to be screening here in Hawaii is just such a huge honor because whenever I got asked who is your favorite director or filmmaker I had I was like I don't I don't know I just know I love films and there was no one to look up to there was no one to track of like success and that's what our parents want is this are you going to be successful are you going to sustain and the fact that there are no Filipino American or at, even like back then at the time not even a lot of Asian American filmmakers out there it it it's a risk and I took this risk because I want other people to take the risk too, that it, you don't have to say no to being an artist because it's just so important to show who you are and to express yourself and express um, who you want to be. It's so important. And so I'm just so honored and thrilled to be here at Hawaii and for everyone here to watch it. Well, um, on continuing on that, um, something that is quite universal to many is uh, parental acceptance or parental reaction i'm curious mm -hmm. if your parents have seen the film and what they thought of it they have seen the film um it's it's really funny uh because you know i don't think that they understood either what asian representation meant until mm -hmm. they watched the film and they were like personally affected they're like that's me that's me that's me yeah and you know my poor dad, he's like, so this is how you think about me. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, this is not about you, you know? And my mom and my mom too, she's like, oh, so that's how it is, huh? I'm like, no, 
this is not about you. But that's the, and I, and I, I think it took them a long time for them to realize this is what it means when you see someone on the screen that looks like you is because you are so deeply connected. And mm-hmm. this was the first time that they really saw someone in a contemporary setting that looks like them and that rep- represented their culture. Um, so, it, you know, at first they were really hesitant and like, um, you know, they're like, Oh, I don't want, I don't want people to think this about us, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, they won't because this is not about you. They're like, oh, but you know, this is our house, no, 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 you, the characteristics. I'm like, yes, because this is the resources I have and this is the experiences I have and this is what I pull from. But I'm like, but this did not happen in our lives, this and that. You know, I was like, nothing has happened in our lives that is, you know. So I think it took them a while to really, um, to really accept that this was not about them. And that, uh, but they are so, they're so proud. They actually did watch it during our premiere at LA Asian Film Festival. And, um, you know, they constantly text all our, my aunts and uncles, like, watch Mallory's movie. And, and, uh, and yeah, I just think even, even just me being a filmmaker now, they, from them literally being there and watching it happen, I think they were like, okay, like, I understand now. I understand how much it takes. And, 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 you know, we weren't sleeping, literally weren't sleeping for like almost a month. And they're like, you did a lot of work and, and you know, people are following you and, and doing what you say. I'm like, yes, because I'm the director and the producer and, and this is what happens. And they're like, wow, I didn't know that. So I think that they have a lot more um, appreciation and understanding. Keyword is understanding of what I do and, and more understanding of my mission and, and wanting to create more Filipino stories. Um, that that people can connect to and it obviously worked since they were very very um you know touched and and swayed by it so uh i think that they're getting a firsthand experience of what it means to have asian representation oh i hope they get to see more and more coverage and more of you as the film goes on to additional spaces and on on that note um can you tell us what's next for the film and, and what might be next for you uh, well, we are um, translating the film into a staged show. So hopefully in a couple of years, you will see this movie become into a, uh, a, a theater, a real theater near you. Not just a movie theater, but a staged theater. And, and we're, we're excited. We're excited. Yeah. Wow. And, okay. and, and what's next for you? Like wh- what? other stories might be in your belly that you want to tell after after the girl who left home has sort of moved on to stage and into the next chapter uh well I have um I'm one of five girls in my family so there I have four sisters and so I have been working on um a tv show surrounded by me and my sisters and we're all you know different ages and we're all living in different parts of the nation and one of my little sisters still in high school so um I'm working on a, on a TV show called um, Five and Some. It's, you know, just like another cute little Filipino American comedy with parents and grandparents and more titas and titos. And who knows, maybe Tito Tony will make an appearance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's, yeah. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm writing now. And I'm also producing, um, currently producing a murder mystery musical with a friend of mine, um, Tim Hutzikit. And um, it's just, it's another fun mystery murder mystery musical I, I can't say much but that's uh that's what's on my it's plate right now yeah it's the best when you can't say much secrets and surprises are ahead yeah um, really stoked well thank you so much for for finishing this film and for getting it out yeah. into the world um yeah. and inspiring more and more especially young women filmmakers of color to kind of continue on this path but that wraps it up for our conversation. Um, thank you for all who are watching this discussion today with Mallory and a special mahalo to all of our HIF sponsors, board of directors and our HIF, ha- HIF Ohana out there. Um, again, salamat, 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 mahalo. And don't forget, if you, if you already watched this film, be sure to tell your titos and titas to also watch the film online. Watch it and vote. And vote. And, and vote. vote. <laughs> and in real vote. life and <laughs> in this festival. <laughs> All right. Thank you. (laughs) 